Welcome back to Nano Talig. Yes, we were here in our previous vlog yesterday at 10 p.m., which is why we are still here today. We spent overnight here, and if you didn't see our previous vlog, we were lucky enough to see the Northern Lights last night, so check that out. Yeah, they were absolutely spectacular. Over the hills of Nano Talig, there was an extra special Northern Lights display that came out just for us. So we're both really excited to get off the ship today and start exploring this more remote location. Hi, if you're new to our channel, we are Tom and Dom Travel and we release a new cruise related video every single week. So if you haven't done so already, press that subscribe button and don't forget to give this video a like. Well, after seeing the twinkling lights of Nano Talig last night, today is the day we get to visit. The view from the balcony this morning was spectacular. The sun was shining, it was pure blue skies, and the scenery just took our breath away. Once again, we're in a lovely little bay here in Greenland, filled with icebergs and a small town full of colourful houses. The tenders had started operating at 7am. We had a quick look over because the tenders were departing from our side of the ship and they were looking pretty full. So we quickly made our way up to the Horizon Buffet just to grab ourselves a little bit of breakfast. This afternoon, we have an excursion booked in Nano Talig and the town looks pretty small. So we decided not to get off straight away. We thought we'd let some of those queues go down. So we thought we'd stay on board, explore the ship, take the opportunity to have a look at some of those views from the top deck. So we had a little wander around. We spotted that the ship was particularly empty. So we headed up to the top deck where the sports court is located. This is the first time that we've had the opportunity to have a little play. So we grabbed ourselves a couple of basketballs and started shooting some hoops <laughs> as best as we possibly could which is not very good at all but we gave it a go isn't it got a little box in the corner with loads of different equipments if you want to play pickleball tennis or even basketball or soccer slash football they've got all of the equipment there for you to use while we were walking around deck, we also noticed that the Women's Football World Cup was going on on the screens. And today was the final between England and Spain. And we caught the end of the match where, unfortunately, England lost. Yeah, but well played, England. Well done, Spain. After wandering around the ship, we headed to our cabin where we collected our bags and coats and headed to Kroonas Bar to collect our ticket for the tender. It was at this point we realised that everyone who'd been watching the Women's World Cup final also now wanted to disembark the ship. So it meant that we were waiting for around one hour before we could get off the ship. And people who came after us had an up to two hour wait to disembark. The reason being why is because Nanotalic is so small and there's only one pier that tenders can land at. So it's one tender at a time. Yesterday in Crocotoc, they had four tenders going and unfortunately one of the tenders had a few technical issues. So there were only three running today. So we were slightly delayed by around an hour getting off so our time exploring was cut short however there was still plenty for us to do once you've collected your tender ticket you're asked to wait on either deck seven six or five and just wait for your number to be called so we took a seat by the reception area on deck five and waited for our number to be called it was very very busy and it's got to be one of the worst tender experiences we've had in terms of timing and organization it really did take us a long time to get off the ship as we said over an hour but some passengers who came after us were waiting up to two hours to get off the ship eventually we were on a tender and heading to nano tally the tender itself took about 10 minutes to get to the pier itself we were treated to some spectacular views because the weather once again was absolutely outstanding it was a beautiful day. Once we arrived in Nano Talik, we disembarked the tender and headed for a quick walk around town. What we did notice when we arrived was the queues of passengers waiting to get back on the tender to head back to Island Princess were huge. Well, they were already starting to build. They'd got all the way to the containers at this point. And we were just surprised because it was only about half past 11. Mm. 
We were surprised the passengers had spent such a short time on land. So we took a short walk around the town. Once again, it is filled with those beautiful, colourful houses and there is still lots to see. The difference between here and Quakatok is that there were far more locals out and about, many of them trying to find ways to sell tourists little trinkets. They all seemed to have a little pallet outside their house with a little stall, selling lots of different items that perhaps weren't so appealing to tourists but perhaps that's all they had available so small little things there were also quite a few locals either singing or dancing and a lot of the children taking part as well it was really surprising just to see how many locals were just trying to capitalize on the number of tourists in the town now Nalo Talik is even smaller than yesterday's destination Quakatok and we were really surprised because even the infrastructure such as the roads and pavements weren't that great most of the time you're walking on gravel paths or gravel roads a lot of the locals were also offering tours so if you didn't have a tour booked with the ship or with princess then you could pick up a tour probably much cheaper with the locals excursions included little taxi rides around town for ten dollars and guided tours around town and also opportunities to go on boat trips both to see whales and icebergs the average price of a boat excursion in Nanotalic was around about 100 US dollars. We did pass a fish market once again similar to the one we saw in Quakatok however today the fish market was closed probably because we're here on a Sunday. Also there is a tourist office in Nanotalic but it's a little further walk away than previously in Quakatok was. The tourist information office was a small short little walk away from the pier where we docked. Inside there was a number of items and souvenirs that you could purchase as well as those local excursions. One important thing to note is pretty much that's the only location you will find a public toilet. It is the only location. Actually the ship information told us there were no public facilities at all in Nanotalic however there was a toilet in the tourist information office. We had a look around inside they even had a sale on Canada Goose coats. Yeah 50% off but they were still really expensive. After browsing in the tourist information shop and doing a little stop for a toilet break, we then headed further around Nanotalic and came across a lovely small church. Now this church really surprised us because on the outside it definitely didn't look much, but on the inside it was beautifully decorated for such a small place. Yes, you could definitely see that they took great care and attention to the church. It was beautiful inside and really, really well maintained. I was was really surprised at just how many seats were available. Also there was an organist playing a little organ in the church which just shows once again the attention to detail the locals are giving to those visitors who come into the town. There was also a small collection asking for donations as well which is pretty much a running theme. Lots of stalls and shops were asking for donations for certain things around the town. Just remember to bring some cash with you. Now Nanotalic is an island set on a rocky outcrop. Now we took this opportunity to climb up on top of some of the rocks to get some of out of this world views of the local area and what a place they live. Now up on top of the rocks we did notice there was a metal mast but around the metal mast there were several ropes tied to it where we discovered local children using this mast as swings. We thought it could have been a playground. It was an eye opener to say the least. It was one of their emergency alert beacons that they sound when certain things happen and the children had obviously climbed up tied a few bits of rope and were using it as a swing set so it just shows that the children locally who have no fear of us visitors at all but they really use their initiative and create something out of nothing now we knew it was time for our excursion and our meeting point was back at the tender port so we headed back that way, but first of all, we stopped off in a local supermarket. Now the supermarket was smaller than the ones yesterday and the stock in the supermarket was far, far less. There were lots of empty spaces on the shelves. Just demonstrated how remote these locations are and if there's bad weather or a ship or a helicopter can't land or dock, then pretty much they go without. They have to go without. Interesting to see that this is their only way of getting supplies in this small supermarket. From there, once 
once we'd grabbed a drink in the supermarket, we headed to the meeting point at the tender landing point. So we had to walk all the way back through town and we were greeted with a princess representative. Now this excursion, we did book direct with princess and we were very, very lucky because pretty much in terms of excursions that princess offer for both of these locations in Greenland, as soon as they were listed, they were sold out. So top tip, if you are coming to Greenland, because the areas are so small, there's very few sort of activities the ship can put on and arrange. So these excursions do sell out very, very quickly. That being said, the locals also provide, as we've mentioned, lots and lots of independent excursions as well. After the meeting point, we headed back towards the tourist information center, but what we did notice that the queues for the tenders now were absolutely huge. They were pretty much snaking around the whole of the Harbour area. Nanotalic isn't that big and majority of the people in Nanotalic appeared to be in a queue to get back on the tender. It wasn't a long walk for us where we reached a small little pier area where we found ourselves kitted out in some lovely thermal suits where me and Dom looked absolutely glamorous in our XL size thermal suits. <laughs> the only sizes that the suits came in were extra large so they were a little bit baggy but they did the job beautifully and kept us warm. If you do go on a boat trip, you don't get these warm no. thermal waterproofs. So because we're going on a rib, we obviously need them because that rib was fast. Yeah, we're on a rib excursion with just nine other passengers. So it's very, very small excursion. It wasn't long before we were on board the rib and ready to go. After a short safety briefing from our skipper, we were off at speed heading towards icebergs. We did try to sit right at the front, but unfortunately we were beaten to it. However, we did sit one row back and after a little while, we were quite thankful of that because the wind, <laughs> oh, it was cold. We were moving at speed and luckily the two people in front of us were giving us a bit of shelter from that wind where they were in full force. So we were moving very fast towards icebergs out in the bay. Our skipper slowed down and gave us a guided tour of all of the icebergs, a little bit of history, where they came from, how far they travelled, how long some of the icebergs were going to stay there because obviously they're constantly melting. Mm. Some of them had got stuck and hit the ground so they were permanently stationary and they pretty much just stay there until they disappeared. The first thing that hit us when we saw the icebergs was the colour. They are absolutely beautiful. It's hues of whites and turquoises and blues. It is spectacular. The second thing was the size. You do not realise how big these icebergs are when you're on board the ship. They do look quite small, but when you get up close on the rib, they are massive. And even better is that when you look down into the water, the size of them below the water is much bigger. When we got close to the icebergs, what we noticed was there was water constantly pouring and dripping away from them. It was incredible, because when you're on the ship and you look at them, you don't see that much detail. But when you're up close, you can see that there's just water streaming everywhere where the ice is constantly melting. There were some cracks in some of the icebergs and our skipper did explain that these icebergs could break at any point. And if we heard any noises, he was gonna take us away from on the icebergs at speed. He said it's really important to be in the rib so you can get away from the iceberg as soon as you can. On a number of the icebergs, there were clear blue lines running through them and they were water that was running through the iceberg before it broke off from the glacier and then instantly froze really, really quickly so it stayed perfectly clear. Mm. It was beautiful. We were also given some history while we were on board and our skipper told us that the bay that we were sailing on used to freeze over every winter, but unfortunately that does no longer happen. It's very rare that the bay would freeze over now. All the locals would used to go hunting once the bay had frozen over for seals. When the seals were there, that would bring polar bears to the area. Now, because the bay doesn't freeze over, not so many seals, not so many polar bears, which is a bit of a shame. What we were also told was in October, that's when the snow used to start. But unfortunately, for the last few years, it hasn't started until December. Yeah, so they've only had snow December and January last year 
hardly any snow at all and not what you would imagine for Greenland where you expect it to be covered in snow for most of the year. Our excursion was only an hour but it was really really interesting and worth the money that we paid for it. It was one of those things that I don't think we'd ever forget. It was just spectacular. The size, the shape, the noise, the feel. It was just fantastic. We then headed back to the pier that we departed mm. from. It only took maybe five minutes. Again, beautiful views over the bay as well as Island Princess. Once we arrived back at the pier, because there was only nine of us, it was really quick to get off the rib, get unchanged, said our thank yous, and then made our way back towards the tender. We joined that massive tender queue, which was still very big, and overall it took us about half an hour to get through the queue back to the ship. At all the time, the queue was getting smaller because we'd left it lighter in the day. Bearing in mind, Island Princess was departing bang on four o'clock, so roughly by now it was around about five past three. Mm. A lot of the locals were still out and about selling their wares, providing us with entertainment, with traditional Greenlandic songs, and some of them made quite a bit of money, which is quite nice. Absolutely, there was quite a lot of dollars in some of their pots, so well done to them. Good day's work. Once we'd arrived back on the ship, we headed straight up to the Lido deck where we grabbed a couple of slices of pizza. We were going to go to the grill just up on deck 15, however the queues were huge. They do make all of the food to order there, so sometimes there can be a little bit of a wait. However, the pizzeria on deck 14 we've always found to be really, really efficient and quick. So we just grabbed ourselves a couple of slices of pizza, a couple of drinks and sat there and enjoyed. It was really hot on deck, the weather was beautiful and there were some of our passengers sunbathing again so we can't believe how lucky we have been with the weather in Greenland every day has been warm it has been clear blue sky we've had such great weather and we've even caught the sun we have, we have. after our pizza and sitting up on the pool deck we then made our way down to our cabin just to watch the sail away from our balcony Sail away happened about half past four, a little bit later than expected, but that was due to the tender issue that we've spoken about earlier. But it wasn't too long and we were off sailing away. Once again, sail away was spectacular as we sailed past some of those wonderful icebergs. This time though, as we got further out to sea, those icebergs got bigger and bigger and bigger. And at one point we just saw this absolutely huge iceberg, completely flat, bigger than the size of the ship, much bigger than the size of the ship. It was amazing. It's an experience that's very hard to put into words because it's just so awe-inspiring. Mm. Prior to boarding Island Princess, we were informed that we'd have three formal nights and one white and gold night. Tonight was white and gold. White and Gold Night happens at the night of the Love Boat Party, which was taking place in Explorer's Lounge. Before the party though, it's time to head down to the Bordeaux restaurant on deck five for dinner. We had a lovely view once again at our regular table where we sat down in no time at all and ordered two glasses of Pinot Noir. For my starter then, I went for the fruit cup with macadamia nuts and I've got to say, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was very, very sweet and refreshing, but incredibly tasty. And I went for the penne a la vodka. Although vodka was in the name, I really couldn't taste any vodkas, but it was a beautiful pasta dish. Then on to the main and I decided to go for roast turkey. Now those of you that watch our vlogs regularly, you know that my roast turkey dinners, some have been successful and some have been terrible. This one was absolutely spectacular. Our stuffing had all of the vegetables, Brussels sprouts, cranberry sauce and some beautiful slices of turkey. Beautiful, thoroughly enjoyed it. For my main course, I went for the beef bourguignon and once again, it was very tasty, although the meat was a little bit fatty for me. The whole meal overall was not too bad. Yeah, I, I did have a little taste. The only criticism I ha had is the beef bouillon on board doesn't come with rice, it actually comes with egg noodles. noodles yeah. And the egg noodles were just a little bit too tough. They were al dente. They were al dente, but it was very tasty. On to dessert then, and I could not resist the carrot cake, and it was spectacular. I thoroughly enjoyed it and could have eaten at least three of them. And I had a wonderful sticky toffee pudding with a ball of ice cream right on top that didn't last me long, so that tells you how good it was. After dinner, it was time to head to Explorers for that love boat party. 
The event was hosted by Andy, the cruise director, and they basically got a number of couples, family members, to come up and participate in a little game show. Yes, it was several rounds of different competitions where they whittled it down each round until there was one winner. Similar to the love and marriage game the night before, however, tonight it was all about love. So whether that was mother-son, sister-sister, husband and wife, it was a good little mixture of contestants in there. Now, me and Don were wearing white, but not many of our fellow passengers were wearing white at all. It was me and Dom and the crew. And Carol, because we told and Carol. Carol. <laughs> yeah, so well done, Carol. Considering that we all had an email about it before we came on board, but they just haven't made much about it. No, and in the patter, it just said smart casual. It didn't say white and gold. White and gold, which is a little bit interesting because obviously prior to boarding, we had an email to say there will be a white, white and gold, gold night. Mm -hmm. The Love Boat party lasted around about 45 minutes and then it was time to head to the theatre for tonight's show. Now, tonight's show was by Yanin Zarif. I hope I've pronounced that correctly. He is a performer who can speak 32 different languages and he absolutely gave us in the audience a go at learning some of those languages. You know, one particular song he did was How to Ask Where the Toilet Is in a number of different languages and he put it together in this little song and it was incredible, it made us all laugh and chuckle. You can tell he's got a, such a fantastic voice. He gave us lots of well-known songs with a mixture of different languages in there. It worked really, really well. One of the best shows of the cruise. His vocals were absolutely on point and we thoroughly enjoyed his performance. Now, fortunately, he's doing another show in a couple of nights time where he's going to focus all on Broadway and West End musicals which is one of Tom's favourites. Yeah. We'll definitely be there for that. After the performance in the main Princess Theatre we headed back to Explorers Lounge where we met our friends Carol and John and sat down for a drink. Now once again it was that karaoke that we've been talking about over and over again becoming very repetitive so we sat at the bar and enjoyed a drink instead with the entertainment from the fabulous bar staff who all always always put on a better show they've got such good camaraderie between each other really really good bunch of people they do have us laughing don't they every day every night after a few drinks and some really good conversation and entertainment we then made our way back to our cabin before we did that though we did quickly nip up onto deck 14 just to see if we could see any of the northern lights again unfortunately not tonight however we're still very very grateful that we got to see them the night before. As we always do, we ordered ourselves a little bit of room service, which didn't take long at all to come, and that was the end of our night. Over the last two days, we've experienced some absolutely incredible things, and even today, with those icebergs, they were glorious. We have had a fantastic time here in Greenland, and it is an experience we would like you all to try and see, because it is absolutely worth it. Now we just want to come back and explore more yeah, absolutely. We want more. Thanks for watching our day in Nanotalic on Island Princess. If you've got any questions, just pop them in the box below and we'll get back to you. And please don't forget to like and subscribe and hit that bell notification button to never miss a video from us. Thanks, Thanks for, for watching. watching. Bye. Bye. Thanks for watching. We've got lots more content available on our YouTube channel, so press that subscribe button. If you're interested in receiving daily updates, we're available on most social media platforms. Just search for Tom and Dom Travel.